This week we're filming from Dawn's garden again, but it's the final time that we're going to be here. So I want to take you through the different heucheras she's got in her garden. There are over 35 wild species of this, and most of the ones we use today in gardens are cultivated. They like to grow in rocky environments or the darker versions like this will grow in full sun. Some of the lighter ones will grow in full shade. Now this particular variety is called frosted violet and we've also got ones such as creme brulee and green spice or it could be jade spice I'm not sure. And there's a lighter leaf variety called ginger beer. And as I mentioned before, when you plant these in full sun, they can get stressed and this sun scorch has resulted in these brown patches on the leaves. So I'd advise Dawn that she moves this next year to a slightly shadier position. And Dawn's asked me to have a look at the Eliagnus because there's some notches out of the leaves. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, these notches out of the leaves are definitely uh, adult vine weevils. They're a bit of a nightmare to be honest because they just are quite able to walk around the garden munching bits and pieces and then they lay their eggs in the soil and you get these larvae and they munch away at the roots. You need to be really careful with the heucheras. I know it's been raining the past couple of times that I've been, um, but the dry weather that we've had recently, I notice has caused um, a problem on, on one of your other plants. Should we go and have a look at it? I noticed on here, on this Acer, you've got this powdery mildew and it's almost like talcum powder that's attached to the leaves, it looks a bit furry and it's caused by drought and I think the problem is down here. This Acer Crimson King wants to be a massive tree and although Dawn cuts it down every year, it still wants to be really vigorous and it's planted in a raised bed in a sandy soil which is going to make the plant even more stressed. So I'd suggest next year keep on top of watering and really give it a good mulch to lock that moisture in. This is foxglove, Digitalis purpurea. It did look stunning in flower. I've cut it back now. I've noticed I'm having a bit of trouble with leaf hopper. See these uh, markings on the leaf is where the leaf hopper draws sap from it and leaves these marks. You could spray but I've not this year because to be honest I'd soon have the blue tits in the garden that feed on insects than bothered about little damage from leaf hoppers. People often plant nasturtiums amongst other things, especially vegetables. Uh, it's called companion planting and the idea is that these black fly, which you can see on here, are attracted to the nasturtiums instead of being attracted to the produce that you're trying to grow. But actually these aren't that infested at all. Maybe it's because they're growing in a hanging basket and they're conveniently located by the back door so you can pick off these flowers and pop them in your salad. I just want to say thank you Dawn for letting us film in your garden over the past three weeks but before I go I've got one burning question. Did you used to have a pine tree in the garden? Oh Lee, you notice. No we didn't. I just brought that in um, from a place just local from here. Just scattered it back so I wanted to get that like a woodlandy feel and I just think it's quite nice. Yeah, I think you've achieved it. I think it's an amazing garden. It's got a lovely feel to it. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Join us next week when maybe Dawn would join us too, when we're going to look round a larger garden in a semi-rural location. But until then, have a great gardening week.